In this tutorial, we're going to look at the Max Gen tilde object, the Gen Patcher specialized for use in the MSP audio domain. We'll briefly introduce the Gen Patching environment and create a simple multiple input fader. In effect, we'll make our own custom compiled MSP object without ever having to leave the Max environment. We'll start by adding a Gen tilde object to a Max Patcher. In an unlocked patcher window, type N to create a new object and type gen tilde into the object box. The object that appears will have two inlets and one outlet. Command double click on a Macintosh or control double click on Windows on the gen tilde object to open the gen patcher window. The gen patching environment will look and feel familiar to you. It contains visual objects called operators that connect together to create an MSP external. There are some differences between ordinary Max patching and working in the Gen world. We'll introduce those differences to you as we go. The default Gen tilde object's patcher window contains operators that send and receive audio input from the Max world outside, together with an operator to add two signals. While this looks similar to an MSP patch, Gen tilde operators work on one audio sample at a time, unlike MSP objects which operate on an entire block of audio samples, which we call a signal vector. There are no bangs or messages used inside the patch. Every operator works on 64-bit floating point numbers at audio rates. All operations in a Gen tilde patch are synchronous. Inlets and outlets do their work in lockstep, similar to the flow of control in MSP. The Gen patching environment is discoverable. The application can tell you about its content while you work, as is the case with Max patchers. Let's examine the default Gen tilde patch for a moment. Unlock the patch by clicking on the lock icon, just as you do with Max. Hovering over any operator will show you a description of the operator in the Patcher Windows status bar. Hovering over an inlet will display a Max assistance bubble with information about the inlet or outlet of the operator. Option clicking on a Mac or Alt clicking on Windows on any Gen operator will display an assistance bubble with a ref page style description of the object's functions. The assistance bubble also has a button that will open the full listing of all Gen objects in the standard Max document window. The Patcher window sidebar is another source of useful information. When you open a Gen tilde object for the first time, you'll see the sidebar's code tab, which displays the actual code that Gen uses, called the Gen Expert, to produce the machine code compiled as you work. Clicking on an operator will highlight the code associated with that operator. As you patch, you can watch the code change in real time as your changes are recompiled in the background. The Reference tab behaves like the Reference tab in Max. It gives you information about inlets, outlets, and attributes associated with an operator, and also lists similar operators. Choosing the Max tab displays the Max window. If you make errors while programming, you'll be alerted to them here. The multiple input fader we're going to create in this tutorial is going to do three things. Receive audio input from MSP objects. Multiply the input values by some value to scale their amplitude, and output the results. We already have two inlets and one outlet in our default object, so let's start by removing the plus operator and adding some inlets and outlets. Type N to create a new operator, and type in or out, followed by a numerical argument that specifies the index of the inlet or outlet. When we're done, we should have four inputs, and two outputs. Since many Gen operators have similar names to Max and MSP objects, we'll use the Gen environment's autocomplete function to help us find an operator to multiply sample values. Type N for a new operator, type star, and look at what the autocomplete function displays. Click on the Multiply Inlets listing to add a multiply operator to the patch. We'll need one multiply operator for each of our inputs. In addition to the in and out operators that send and receive audio from outside of the Gen tilde object, we use the Gen param operator to control Gen tilde patches using max messages. 
type n to create a new operator, and type the word param into the box followed by an argument that we'll use to uniquely identify it. We'll call this parameter fader value. To set an initial value for the parameter, add an optional second argument. We'll set the fader value to an initial value of 0. You'll notice that we typed 0 without a decimal point. All numerical values in a Gen tilde patch are 64-bit floating point numbers. You can type the decimal point if you wish, but you don't need to. An elegant feature of naming parameters in the Gen environment is that we can perform calculations using the parameter name. Click on a multiply operator to select it and type a space followed by the word fader value into the operator box. When we do this, the second inlet of the multiply operator disappears. That's because we've assigned the value to that parameter. Our patch works exactly as if we had connected the outlet of the parameter operator to the inlet of the multiply operator with no arguments typed into the operator box. We'll do that for all of our multiply operators. This patch is going to group four inlets in pairs. To keep the output from distorting, we're going to sum two inputs together and multiply that result by 0.5. When we connect more than one operator to the same inlet of a gen operator, the inputs are summed automatically, as with MSP. When we close and lock the gen tilde patcher, you'll notice that the gen tilde object in the max patch now has four inlets and two outlets. We've now created a compiled multi-channel MSP gain fader object using the gen tilde object. While a simple gen tilde patch like this isn't more efficient than an MSP program, we can gang together smaller gen tilde patches inside of a single gen patcher to realize greater efficiencies. To test our patch, we can add some cycle objects and an easy DAC tilde to turn the audio off and on. To change our volume level, we need to send a message to the gen tilde object composed of the name of the parameter we created, followed by a floating point number. We'll add a message box, a slider, and a scale object to do this. Remember that while messages from outside of the gen tilde object are sent at Max's message control rate, operations internal to the gen tilde object happen one sample at a time. We can send values at sample rates too, and we'll show you how to do that next time. In our next tutorial, we'll show you some new tricks and add new features to this patch to start building a DJ Mixer object. In the meantime, happy patching!